Hi everyone, this is Sahil with Quicknode and we love being a part of helping Web3 space grow. This tutorial is going to be about smart contracts and solidity. So let's see what a smart contract is. So smart contracts are nothing but pieces of code which resides on Ethereum blockchain or uh, different blockchains, but mostly on Ethereum blockchains. So smart contracts have these executable instructions and whenever these particular instructions are met, the smart contracts get executed and gives the desired output. So smart contract is basically, or I must say, majorly written in a language called Solidity. It's very similar to JavaScript and is derived from C, C++. So smart contracts are mainly written and tested in this integrated development environment called Remix Ethereum. So go to remix.ethereum.org and you must see a user interface similar to this. So create a new file by clicking on this icon. We can name it anything. We'll name it contract dot solid. So we can, as we can see, this is our new file which is created. Dot sol is the extension of solidity files. So I already had a smart contract from this guide, which is over here. So I'm going to use this smart contract to demonstrate how to write a smart contract. So I'm just going to paste it here. And uh, I'll explain you line by line what these lines mean. This first line means the license or uh, copywriting of your smart contract. Over here, we are mentioning it as MIT license, which is a open source license. And on the second line, we are mentioning the version of Solidity compiler for which this code should be executed for. For example, we have written Pragma Solidity 0.8.1. So it says to the compiler or to Ethereum Remix ID that this particular code should be executed in Solidity 0.8.1. And on line four, we are starting our smart contract. So we start our contract with a keyword called contract. And this counters is the name of our smart contract. And after that, we are declaring a variable called count, which will store the value. By the way, this smart contract is meant to increment a value. So whenever user will click on this function increment, it will increase the value of the variable count. And then when we call the function get count, it will get the increased value of count. So that's the basic function of this smart contract. So this function, as I mentioned, that uh, function increment is of type public and uh, it will increase whenever this function is called, it will increase the value of count by one. So now you may think that what does type public means? Whenever a function is defined as type public, it means that this particular function can be accessed outside of the scope of this function as well as outside of the scope of this particular smart contract. It can be accessed from different smart contracts too. And after that, we are declaring a function called get count, and it is of type public too. And we are also mentioning that it is of view mutability. So view means that this particular function will not modify or write any data on the blockchain. It will just read data from the blockchain. And there, we are also mentioning a return and a return type. So return type is uint, which is unsigned integer, which is also the type of a variable count. And what this function will do is it will simply return the updated value of count. So this is a smart contract. And let's compile our smart contract by going to this second tab over here. And as you can see, you already mentioned that this smart contract is meant for solidity version 0.8.1. So the IDE automatically selects the version based on this line. And now let's compile our smart contract. OK, so it is compiled. As you can see, there's a green tick over here. And now let's deploy our smart contract on the Robson testnet. So Ethereum has this 
mainnet, which is the main Ethereum network, you can uh, compare it with the production environment. And there are this other test nets. You can compare them as development environment or staging environment. So let's deploy it. But first of all, you need this MetaMask extension. So MetaMask is a wallet extension for Chrome. So you will need this MetaMask to sign the transactions and to pay the gas fee for your transactions for your transaction of deploying your smart contract. Whenever we make any transaction on Ethereum network or any any blockchain, we'll have to pay a gas fee. Gas fee is nothing but a transaction fee we are paying to the network for allowing us to use the network. So whenever we are doing a write or modification operation on the blockchain, we have to pay a gas fee or we in, norm, in other words, transaction fee. So as you can see, I have six ETH, which is not the real ETH, it's testnet ETH, it's test ETH, which doesn't have any real world value. So you need to get some test ETH in your wallet too. So after getting the MetaMask extension and uh, setting up your account, you will need to go to this Robson testnet and uh, copy your account address from here and then look for Robson faucet. And you'll see, and after going on the first link, you'll see uh, interface something similar to this. And when you paste your address over here and just simply click on send me test ETH and the faucet will send you some test ETH which you can use in your development. Okay, so now let's come back to our Ethereum Remix. And there, over here in environment, you must select injected web three, which means that it will use uh, the metamask wallet to sign your transaction and to send your transaction now over here we only have one contract compiled so it will simply show this contract but there can be some times where there are multiple smart contracts compiled already and they are ready for deployment so you must see a lot of contracts in this uh, list but you must select the appropriate contract and click on deploy so now this metamask window will open as you can see over here and this is asking for a permission to sign the transaction and to allow the gas fee to be detected from our account so let's click on confirm and it can take some time for the transaction to get confirmed so let's wait for the transaction to get confirmed so as you can see over here the transaction is confirmed and we got a deploy con smart contract over here you can see the function increment and get count over here. So when we click on the function get count, we get the value as zero because we haven't used our function increment yet. The value of count is still zero. So now let's increase the value of get count by one by using the function increment. So after clicking on the function increment, it will ask for gas fee again because as i mentioned that whenever you want to edit or write anything on the blockchain you need to pay some gas fee so right now we are editing the value of count and we are increasing the value of count by one so we have to pay some gas fee so let's confirm this transaction and let's wait for the transaction to get confirmed so as you can see over here the transaction is confirmed so let's call our function get count again and see what's the value of count now. So as you can see, the value of count is increased by one and is reflecting only one over here too. So this shows us that uh, we have successfully deployed a smart contract, contract dot solidity, and uh, also used our smart contract function. You can also view your smart contract by copying your contracts address from here and searching it on etherscan but uh, as the smart contract is deployed on robston network so we'll search for robston etherscan and uh, paste the address which we copied from here in the search bar so as you can see this is a smart contract and these are the transactions which has been made 
to the contract. So this first transaction was the transaction for contract creation, as you can see over here. And the second transaction was to write the value of account. As you can see over here, we use the method called or function called increment. It also shows that. So here we saw how to write and deploy a smart contract in uh, Remix Ethereum. So I hope this video was helpful and educational. So we'll be tagging the links to our Discord and the uh, guide section of our website. It has many different guides on different different topics. You can refer those. And uh, if you have any questions, you can simply join our Discord server. There are a lot of developers, experienced developers, and uh, industry pioneers in that server. If you have any questions, simply join that server and ask your questions there. There are many developers who will be happy to answer your questions, and I'll be there too. So yeah, see you.